Welcome to the show. My name is Ron. I'm the host of this show. And this is a channel you don't need to subscribe to. You don't have to hit the like button. You don't need to hit the bell for notifications. I do this every day. <laughs> and I definitely won't ask you for any money. But it's a good place to come and hang out. Calm the mind. Get a little devotional time in. And give you something to think about meditating on. Okay. Well, let's get right down to the devotional this morning. Coming to you from Romans chapter 12. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because all of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of others, measuring yourselves before. <laughs> Be honest in your evaluation of others. I've... Hang on. <laughs> Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. Amen? <laughs> Amen. A little context from our daily bread. We are one. In a small farming community, news travels fast. Several years after the bank sold the farm David's family had owned for decades, he learned the property would be available for sale. After much sacrifice and saving, David arrived at the auction and joined a crowd of nearly 200 local farmers. Would David's meager bid be enough? He placed the first bid, taking deep breaths as the auctioneer called for higher bids. The crowd remained silent until they heard the slam of the gavel. The fellow farmers placed the needs of David and his family above their own financial advancement. This story about the farmer's sacrificial act of kindness demonstrates the way the Apostle Paul urges followers of Christ to live. Paul warns us not to conform to the pattern of this world by placing our selfish desires before the needs of others and scrambling for self-preservation. Instead, we can trust God to meet our needs as we serve others. As the Holy Spirit renews our minds, we can respond to situations with God-honoring love and motives. Placing others first can help us avoid thinking too highly of ourselves as God reminds us that we're part of something bigger. The Holy Spirit helps believers understand and obey the scriptures. He empowers us to give selflessly and love generously, so we can thrive together as one. Father God, please rid me of any selfish, selfishness so I can love selflessly and stand as one with my brothers and sisters in Christ. 
Amen. Amen. Oh, a little bit of tongue tying going on there this morning. <laughs> oh, well. Just shows how human I am. Okay. Let's get on to the commentary. This one again is going to be a little bit argumentative. All of the rules and regulations that the powers to be are imposing on us in regard to climate change is all designed to break our will to be individuals, will for adventure, and our will for entrepreneurial spirit. Eliminating plastic bags, taxing our carbon output, making gas too expensive for us to buy, building electric cars, banning gardens, stopping wood heating appliances, One volcanic eruption puts more carbon dioxide into the air than all of our efforts to reduce carbon. <laughs> Just saying. The Bill Gates, George Soros's, and Klaus Schwab's of this world want us to be sheep. Stupid, compliant, yet somewhat useful for their purposes. Right? But let me tell you what. We were fearfully and wonderfully designed by our Creator to subdue this world and enjoy all of its marvelous grandeur. People say there are seven wonders of the world. I argue there are many, many more. I don't want to see a few of them yet. Now, some people will say that it's all pointless. We can't change things. You can't fight City Hall. Well, that might be true. But God didn't say he quit when the going gets tough. He told us to run the good race to the end. Fight the good fight. And you'll find that in 1 Corinthians 9 and 2 Timothy 4. Endure till your last breath. And take time to enjoy this world while it's here. <laughs> Amen. You all have a good day. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. And the word of the day is enigmatic. Bye for now. <laughs>